So uh, welcome everyone. Um, I'd like to uh, introduce myself. I'm Fiona Hell. Um, I have a range of different businesses and projects that I play in and do. And um, as part of that, I like to introduce um, people to yourselves, the followers, to um, to have some inspiration from and hear about other people's stories along the way. So um, today I'd like to introduce you to Kelly Bowen. Um, welcome, Kelly. Hi, Fiona. Hi, Liz. Thank you so, so much for having me on the show. Thank you. Um, so, uh, Kelly, how about we start with you telling uh, the people watching a little bit about what you currently do? What's your business, or what what do you um, spend most of your time doing? <laughs> Sounds like an interview. <laughs> so, well, there's two things that there's two things that I do. So, I do about four days a week in a finance. Brokerage. So I run finance brokerage for my best friend who owns the business, and then I've got outside of that, which is my passion project, which is my business. And which I'm currently in the process of rebranding as myself. I guess from uh, I guess what inspired this interview, everything sort of transpired and happened really fast. Like I'd had my business running as Exceptional Living with Kelly Bowen. However, based on before the end of um, last year, I just it hit this point, and I was like, what I was doing, and I was sitting in the space of health and health coaching, and I was it just it, it wasn't working for me. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to take a break. I'm going to let it all go and Funnily enough, I said to myself, first January, I'm going to start posting again. I'm going to start engaging with my audience. And first of January came around and I'm like, I'm still not inspired to do this. And then I had this opportunity, to, like then obviously with what transpired this week, we're in the what are we, six, seven days into the year. Then all of a sudden it all came together and uh, the space where I'm sitting with my business now is very much in the purpose niche and waking people up to what's most important to them and getting them to believe in themselves and their message and and that they're worth it because there, I think there are so many great people out there that are just sitting in their, in their comfort zone and too afraid in case life calls on them and ask more of them because they don't know how or they've taken something on somewhere along the lines where it's not true and it's made them not doubt themselves. So I guess unraveling all of this and it happening so fast is where I'm really sitting long-winded answer to what my business is <laughs> it was, it's within purpose and then I really love connecting people with what's most important with them and helping them grow the courage to go out and get it yeah awesome it's funny you say that we're seven days in because literally this morning I've had a little bit more clarity myself about the purpose the the kind of direction of a few things that I'm doing and and does it kind of sit under a business name or does it really sit under my own name you know, like, am I the foundation and these are kind of the branches? So, um, interesting. I'm glad I'm not the only one that's kind of getting that realisation. No, and, and like, it's just, it's happened so fast. I, I wasn't ready. Like, I was still working on doing the rebranding and this. I was doing all that kind of stuff and then it just sort of went boom. And I'm like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's roll with it. Don't yeah. Don't box to put it on, but it is. I'm branding as myself and my message is that living exceptionally is the status quo. That much I can tell you. <laughs> that's what we're rolling with. Absolutely, absolutely. I think um, as a side note there for newbies coming on, uh, you know, kind of finding that purpose, with action comes clarity. So, you know, if you need to know right now what your purpose is, sometimes you need to take some some movement and some action and then it will kind of come. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. And the other thing, and it's a good point you make for newbies, newbies get you're going to change bits and pieces. Like, it, like you're going to keep growing and keep changing and what you thought it was to what it ends up being, it's probably going to be completely different and that's okay. And yeah. sometimes you feel like, I don't know about you, but did you find this, and some, and you were still finding this along the way, the more you grow, sometimes it's like, it's almost like start and rebuild again and start and rebuild again. But every time you go through that process, the foundation of what it is that you're creating becomes so much more solid. And it becomes so much more authentic and the, in that process, like I guess there's a level of character building that happens there too. There's a level of testing, but it really, it, it's sort of like um, killing all lays back to what's most important for you and what your message truly is. And your message changes too as you grow. Have you noticed that? Absolutely, absolutely. One of my business has changed, has had rebranding three times before, you know, we kind of got to this point where it is now. Um, and I think it's, maybe not necessarily going to get a rebranding, but it's certainly going to have a change in focus again now that I have more clarity around, well, where, you know, what are the specialist kind of services or what, are, what is it that I bring to that business as opposed to, you know, where it started out four years ago in a completely different, you know, direction and, and venture then. So, and I think that comes through building your own muscles in, you know, your mental muscle and your confidence muscle and all of that, you know, that you, um, you start to, truly believe that you have something bigger and better to bring rather than just that first thing you started with. 
Yeah, and it is too, at the beginning, you know, you think you're dreaming big and you think you're playing big, but the further down you realise, and the further, the further down the rabbit hole you go, the more you realise is that I can do so much more. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And in that too, like then every time you go through that process, the direction changes again. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And as we've seen in, you know, and why you and I connected um, it, this week, um, the the kind of direction we take in life as well changes so many different times. Um, and your story hit me this week, um, not only through the rawness that you brought and the, the honesty and the authenticity about it, but um, that it, it kind of reflected for me too that um, whilst I'm where I am now, wow, there's been a whole big journey that's gotten me to here. So could I open with um, that you were once a world champion athlete? Yes, <laughs> yes, I was. So, what were you? What um, what what did you specialise in? I don't want to say what was your thing, but yeah, what was your what were you an athlete in? So, my thing was water skiing. So, have you seen? Uh, you're in Adelaide, aren't you? Um, I'm in Melbourne now, but I'm originally yeah. from Adelaide. Okay, cool. Do you know the Moomba water ski tournament that they have on the Yarra every year? Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me, I used to compete in that. Wow. So. Favorite thing. So I did all three events. I did trick and jump, and my favorite one was jump. It was the one I just excelled at. Yeah. Loved it. Something about the, the experience of when you're in the air. The closest thing I can say to what it's like. You ever been down the highway at 100 kilometers an hour? And you know, and you put your hands outside the window and you do this. Yeah. On your whole body, and you're just sort of like suspended in the air. It's awesome. Wow. So yeah, that was yeah, that was my thing. I did that for a good. 10, I did it from 10 to about the age of 21 and it was an really incredible experience, like the best way to see the world as a kid, like I had access to, to things and resources that just in my normal living wasn't available, like I didn't come from a wealthy background. Um, it's not that we didn't have money, we had money but for playing that sort of a sport at that level it was was we really didn't if that makes sense like didn't really have that kind of income to be doing that and I was lucky that I was like a lot of the Australian team stuff it was all funded and it was it was the best best experience so grateful for it and did it shaped me well actually there's a few things I've done that have really shaped me <laughs> but from that particular time in my life the one thing actually there was a couple of things that really stand out there was one piece of advice that my coach told me at the time and i think i was 14 and this is how i was starting to get like you know the hormones kick in you get a little crazy and um, i remember her uh sitting me down because home life at that time wasn't all that great mum and dad had quite a messy divorce and i was getting a bit too big for my as you'd call it and so she sat me down and she told me that there was one thing in life that no matter what happened to me no one could ever take it away from me. And that was the power of my choice. Not just choosing about what to do, but choosing what I, tr like, make things mean. And mm -hmm. I didn't get, I didn't get the, at the time, I didn't really get the, um, the power of that message. And then I started going to the coaching thing and said, like, years, years later, I'm like, that was a really good thing to tell a little girl <laughs> at the time. So there was that and, she was, and there was something like, you know, you can be, you can either let um, your past, you know, keep you back or you can use it to propel you forward sort of thing is the general message she gave me with that. And the other thing that I really got out of that time was how to set goals and how to, like my, literally my whole like teenage years were planned from like 10 to up to the point of 19 to when I won that world title of every little thing that had to get done to get to a point of, being able to perform at that level and it's funny like being over it I guess now knowing what I know now with all the coaching skills and having got out like I look back over the architecture of it and I just see it so differently and at the time of living in it you don't get that it's just a okay well this year I need to learn this and that I need to do that does that make sense yeah absolutely absolutely and it's it's interesting that you say don't let your past hold you back from you know what you're capable of being becoming um, because you have such an interesting journey from that time of, of being a world champion athlete to now you know being a, an amazing business owner and coach and mm -hmm. I wonder if you um, would like to I know that your your um, message this week to your followers was very raw and open and I wonder if you would like to share a little bit of that you know that kind of journey of, of um, you know I think a lot of people think to become a coach you have this perfect life that got you there and it's I oh, think yeah. the people with the most fucked up lives become coaches like <laughs> It's like saying, <coughs> excuse me, those who, 
those who study psychology do it because you said we could swear on the show, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, swear the heck out. <laughs> I thought I read that in the news. Um, but those who do psychology do it to unfuck themselves. Sort yeah. Of thing. And yeah. It, honestly, if I think about my life, like up until there was all kinds of, without going on a big long, long story, but there was abuse there, there was sexual abuse, there was before I even got into like the skiing stuff and then going through that to then, then from after skiing, next that was skiing was sort of my escape out of that and my escape into being, um, I guess into my life having purpose and to my life having, you know, I've got this goal and I'm doing this thing and it's going to be awesome. I still remember writing my grade six book. I'm going to be a world champion when I grow up. Didn't know, <laughs> but anyway, power of writing things down. Um, then after that moment, once I hit night one, it was like a couple of days before my 19th birthday that I won that, or no, a couple of days before my 20th birthday that I won the world title. And in that moment, it was incredible. It was phenomenal. I thought all my dreams had come true. I had, um, universities in America offering me scholarships to go study whatever I wanted. It was really cool. And then I got, then after, once the dust sort of settled, I was like, oh, what do, do I really want this? Because I was like, do I want to put another like six years into skiing? Like if I go to America to do a degree, it's really what I'm committing to. And I'm like, I just, I, I don't know if I really want to do that. Like the, the, the thing that had driven me so hard to get to that point, it was almost like it died really quickly after that. And it just left me with this void where, well, if I'm not, Kelly Bowen, the water skier, who am I? What am I? And then it's, um, and after that, I, I went into went to the corporate world. I'm like, oh, I've been a world champion. It can't be that hard. If I, if I want to climb the corporate ladder, I'll just focus on something and I'll, I'll do that. And then really working. And I had some, I had, I think I just kind of started hitting the club scene. This is where I just started discovering drugs <laughs> at the time. And I was like, it was so exciting and again like Clubland when you first go in quite pretty and I'd met some of the girls and they'd like they were they were dancers and the strippers and I was looking at their lifestyles and they've got this great lifestyle they're working three days a week they're making over 3k the three nights work they're traveling all over the world they can do whatever they want they've got all the nicest things they look stunning like like really glamorous stunning this is before like all the Botox and the fake lips and all that kind of stuff they were just like really beautiful stunning girls and I'm like Hmm. <laughs> maybe, maybe this corporate thing really isn't for me because I was also getting myself in trouble because I just got into management and I kept developing my staff and shifting them into different areas. <laughs> and I kept getting in trouble for it because they'd be like, you keep moving on the best people. You're not meant to do that. You're meant to like develop them and they stay for a couple of years and they go. And my little head, like, why would I stand in the way of somebody's dreams? Why wouldn't I help them? However, but that's not quite how companies work and I really wasn't enjoying it because I was getting a lot of pressure things that I didn't want to in that environment. And I still remember my the first night, I still remember the first night, the first dance, the first customer. And that night I made $1,000. And I was like, this is easy. And I was like, hmm, thinking. I'm like working, I'm working like two it's taking me a fortnight to make, it was pure simple math. So I was like, it's taking me a fortnight to make $1,500. I've just done five hours and made $1,000. I'm like, hmm. <laughs> so anyway, then it sort of became a no-brainer. And then being all uh, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, I was like, well, you know what? I've got this great opportunity to make a lot of money. I'm going to do the smart thing. I'll save it. I'll save for a house and I'll invest in something. Yeah, that didn't happen. <laughs> So there was the first three years in truth were phenomenal. They were, it allowed, I remember, I still remember the first time I really tapped into my, um, my feminine sexual, I was quite, being from my skiing background, I was like a first class tomboy. I still remember my sister teaching me how to put makeup on when I was 21 because I had no idea how to do it. And um, Anyway, and I was like, I never thought that I'd be pretty enough to be able to do something like that or, or that I even knew how to express myself like that. I uh, still remember the first time I actually felt it. It was like this surge of energy went through my whole body. It was like I, I came into my feminine for the first time. I came into my sexual energy for the first time. And then seeing how people 
react to that. Being like within the club environment, seeing what that brings out of men. So obviously, of course, there were the ones that, you know, there were the douchebags that that aren't worth talking about. But then you had the other group of people and when they come into contact with that energy, like when the masculine energy receives that kind of energy from the feminine, they come alive. They become animated. It's like they've been seen for the first time and they've been given... um, give a permission to be themselves. And I still remember there was a, a game that one of my good girlfriends used to play this game with their clients to get them to come back because the more you could get people to come back and the, uh, the better you did because you had what was called a regular income, as regular as that income could be, I guess. Anyway, and she played the, the game that she used to play was she'd say to her clients, you know what, how about this week you go and do something that you've never done before and I'll do it too and next week we'll come back and talk about it. And this he came, this guy came back the next week and she's like, oh, how'd you go? What did you do? And um, he's like, well, you go first. She's like, oh, I want my watch on the opposite hand. And, <laughs> and he's like, oh, okay. And, and she's like, oh, well, what did you do? I quit my job. We are like, what? And he goes, I hate it. It's the best thing I ever did. That thing was sucking my soul dry. I'm so glad you gave me that chance. And I was like, wow, like that's just, you don't realize like how much influence you have and how something so simple. And when you spend that kind of a time with a person, and it is, it's intimate. You get like, it's going from kind of a little bit from date one to date 10, like that quickly, that level of comfort, level of familiarity, that, level of trust it's really quite an obscure thing like when i actually think back about it um but because you're thinking at that deeper level like what what can happen can be quite magic like that and so after like that i also inspires i'm this one myself as well and um this the the guy that i said it to um he went and did it and he came back and I asked him, I was like, okay, so, so what did you do? And he goes, I found a homeless person, took him to lunch. And I was like, oh, gosh, there are just, there are good people on this planet. I really like people. And I didn't do anything that exciting. I just want my socks on the opposite feet. And then ever since then, I haven't cared so much about wearing odd socks. <laughs> and you're like, okay, some kids matching socks these days. Uh, but yeah, it, was, uh, it was quite a, like, it was, it really was a cool experience. And it, the, the three years that I stayed to on the where the partying had grew up with me, like my friend Joni, she spelt it out so well in her post where she came out to and she was talking about um, she I think she called strip, strip of brain strip of brain fog or something, and it's where the fatigue catches up with you, the drinking catches up with you, the drugs catch up with you, and you just lose yourself. You can lose yourself in it where you either. You either, go, you either have a plan and you get out and you invest a whole lot of money in personal development, like hundreds of thousands into personal development. You build something, you create something, you get out of there. Or there's girls that get stuck there. And my heart you know, feels for them because they just don't have the support around them for it. And then I guess you've got the other, the other group of girls that actually just love it. They, they, they love it. Yeah. yeah. What an amazing story. And... Um, and I think it, it reminds me a lot to um, what I've noticed a lot is people are, they kind of need to label a lot of stuff. So they need to label themselves as something. So, you know, I'm a mum, I'm an accountant, I'm a this, I'm a that. Um, and therefore have to put labels on other people. So when they, when in general, when people place the, the stripper label or the dancer label on people, you know, that in turn because what we've been taught from wherever you know that it's it's bad it's naughty it's you know it's sleazy it's this is this but you know the insight that you've provided um not only myself i have been to strip clubs it's, it doesn't phase me um you know but there are other people out there that maybe have never experienced it is that the the, the people they're doing a job they're doing a job um, you know the the insight that we've received is really that you know it's 
yes, there is a body there doing something, but part of it is about just having a connection with someone. It's actually being there, you know, just feeling um, a sense of, I guess, calm and connection and, and a place of belonging and that the rest of the world is outside there and for now I can just be here and just be present for, you know, whilst my dramas are out there or, you know, my awesome life is out there, whatever it is. So, yeah, you know, I think, um, yeah. Yes, sir. In, in there, it's fantasy land. It's like the moment you walk through that door, the time, time stops. Everything that happens in there is so surreal. Like I used to say that everybody who walks through that door has come in wanting something. You can figure out what it is that they want and how to give it to them. You're going to have a great night. If you can't, not only will you have a sucking knife, but you'll probably go home empty-handed. But when you... Oh, you just learn to understand people and behaviour and uh, what's not being said in what is being said and how to, like, read through it. Like, some people need you to just call them on it, how it is. Others need you to, you know, really build them up because they either they have a home environment where they're constantly... Um, picked on is not the right word, the criticized is not the right word, but what am I trying to say? Where I think when it comes to masculine and feminine energies, there often can be a misunderstanding where the feminine energy can be quite like at the masculine and all the masculine here is criticism. And the worst thing you can ever do to a masculine energy is criticize them because it literally makes them shrink. Like it's, it's soul shattering. Whereas with a woman, you know, the worst thing you can do for us is to not understand us. So there becomes this friction. And sometimes for a man is coming into that kind of environment, he doesn't have to be anyone. He doesn't have to please anyone. The whole environment set up to please him. Yeah. It's such, like I can see how the, how the dynamics work and how the different things play out. And even, and for some men come in there just, Stickly to learn how to communicate with a woman because they don't know how to, and it's a uh, there is so much. I, you know, I think the the thing I did the most more than anything was talk. Very good at talking, and very good at connecting, and very good at seeing others, and very good at being present and and just being with them. As opposed to, and yes, there is that side of it. And I think for most people, if you do walk into a strip club, that this, the kind of experience I'm talking about, that you're going to have off the bat. Like there's a, it, it really depends on, um, you know, what club you're at, what, like you know, what girls are working at. Even so, but for the most part, though, you'll just get approached and, hi, how are you? How's your night? Do you want to dance? And it's pretty much standard. But these sorts of experiences, because I didn't, don't do anything for the sake of doing. Like everything that I do has purpose and meaning. So for me, they were the experiences that I really like to create. And when I invest my time in this, I want it to be worthwhile. Does that make sense? Absolutely, absolutely. And I think it's so fascinating to to see how that now plays out in the life that you lead now and, and what you do in your business is that, um, you know, you continue to be present and, and connect with people and, and enlighten them in how they are as well as how they can behave with other people and things like that. So I think it's absolutely fascinating and, you know, it's such a unique story to hear of, um, you know, and I'm sure there are other people out there that we I just haven't come across yet, but such a unique story of, of um, you know, where, we, where you've been labelled a world champion and then what happens when you don't have that label and then to be labelled a, you know, a stripper or dancer and then what happens both sides of that label and then to now be you know, this fantastic businesswoman and coach. So amazing. I was terrified posting that because was, it was the one thing, like so many times I've gone to situations that come up and with like with my close client group that I've been working with, they're so loyal, just love them, love them so much. They're like family that I've been able to be all of myself with. And when I am all of myself and I can share so openly, what happens in the rooms is just magic. When I'm in unfamiliar environments because I've been like holding this, I don't think I even realised how much like keeping this card so close to my chest, like what the impact of that was. And the, like when I really, I was terrified. Like there was nothing glamorous about it. Like my eyes were shaking, my hands were, were, were like had the jitters, I had like the cold sweats and I was like, it's got to be done. And then I didn't realise until I pressed 
post just how much I needed to because I'd find there'd be times I'd, I'd get inspired with things and then I'd get bored because I couldn't I couldn't bring to the table what I really wanted to bring to the table because I was of, uh, I guess, how it was going to be perceived and in that moment of, I guess, hearing what happened to that girl and my phone going nuts and having girls texting me, like, from the past, did you hear about this, did you hear about this? I was like, so, something of hope needs to get released. So, some kind of different image about this needs to be released. Like, I, I didn't think too much more about it. In saying that, I've just noticed the how I was saying at the beginning of the interview that I just wasn't, at first of January, I still wasn't inspired to write anything. Now I'm really inspired to write things and so I don't have to hide anymore. Mm. Mm. I don't have to, and the, even the one, the one negative comment that I get, God bless his little soul. But, but even still it wasn't, didn't, didn't face me. It wasn't a, you know, I've dealt with so much worse, <laughs> so much worse. Because again, in that environment, like another gift from it was the, one thing I learned was how to deal with rejection, how to deal with the with fallout, that that kind of stuff. Because you, you have to learn, you have to be able to go next, next. And resilience is a muscle um, that you don't need to go to a strip club and be a stripper to learn to build resilience. That's not what I'm saying. <laughs> but resilience is a, a, a quality that's a little bit undervalued, and or, or not so much not undervalued, but it's a what am I trying to say? I think resilience is a muscle we can all work on building more so that we can be more of ourselves and that we can share more and just realising how that it's not personal and, and taking it on as like the... We do get resilience. It's a good thing. It means that at least there's a message worth sharing that's getting attention because if it, if it wasn't getting attention, you wouldn't get that level of resistance. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's interesting too that you, I've got two points to make. First one, for those people that didn't know, there was um, a dancer this week in Melbourne who um, ha has passed away in in a club and so that's where um, some of this kind of coming out, I guess, was, yeah. was sparked. Um, <laughs> um, secondly, um, you're, you're right, like when you actually tell your whole story, that's when you can just... You can just purely be there. I found for me, um, so having started my first business four years ago, having had um, only known how to do perfectionism, um, so didn't ask, help. <laughs> didn't ask for help, completely fucked it all up, um, which I'm so grateful for now, but at the time wasn't, lost everything, um, went into depression, tried to take my life. At that point in time, I was like, oh, my God, I can't tell anybody that, you know, I failed so badly and this and this and this. Now it's it's part of my journey. And if I don't talk about that, then I can't be authentically about this whole fucking journey I've been on. So it's actually since I started being real and open about it is that it is, it is a real fact about starting a business. It's just possible, you know, it's something that's possible that could happen. So this is why I, um, you know, work with people and encourage them to ask for help and you know, that kind of thing. But until that point that I opened up that chapter and started talking about it, um, you know, it's actually enabled me to, c to connect with so many more people because they're like, oh, I felt just like that. I'm like, yeah, so did I. And there's so many people that are. So, yeah. So if there's one tip that you could give um, give anybody who's looking at making big changes in their life, um, what would that tip be? So I just missed the first part of the question. If if I could give one tip yeah. to people making big changes in their life, what would it be? Yeah. Okay, that's a good question. Hmm. One thing. I'm not very good with one thing. <laughs> so All right. <laughs> okay, up to three. <laughs> it's this. If, if I did have to, like, boil it down into any one particular thing is every master had to start at a beginner at some point in their life. And in the journey from beginning to mastery, which that's how they learn to become a master. At the beginning, get you're going to fuck it up. You're probably going to have a really big mess, but, and that's okay. Because this is the part where you learn and you grow and it shapes your character and you're picking up all the pieces you need along the way to get to that end point. I also think the bigger the goal we set, the bigger the change you're wanting to make, get to there's a gap between where you are and where it is that you want to be. And the bigger that gap, sometimes the bigger the challenges that you're going to get. Don't see them as 
I try to be somewhat detached to it in the moment because get the, the challenge because it's shaping the who you need to be to have that thing that it is that you want. If it's to have a really big following, if it's to make a really big impact on the planet, if it's to even just to be the parent you can be. Get though in, in, in having those goals, the who you as a being needs to be shaped into that identity. So the only thing between you, where you are now and where it is that you want to be is the person you need to become. If you were already that person, you'd have the result. So get, it's like a, um, uh, yeah, they've got to sharpen the knives. Otherwise, the knives don't work. So, yeah, the, the challenges, embrace them. They are going to be there. If you fuck it up, it's totally fine. If you're doing it or wrong, you're not because all paths do lead to the same place. They really do. Awesome. Love it. So inspired. Um, if anyone's watching this and they want to get in contact with you, how can they do it? Is there a website or an email? Um, yeah, I'm not gonna say, not, won't go to my website. It's being redone. And so what's on the on the current website is not the direction that I'm heading. It's all about health. So um, the best way to get in contact with me is through Facebook, either uh, PM me, Kelly Bowen, or there is my Facebook page, which is Exceptional Living with Kelly Bowen. So contact me through either way uh, or underneath the comments in this video. Awesome. I love it. I love it. Uh, on behalf of everyone, thank you so much, Kelly, for joining us today. It was an absolute ball to hear everything and to share this space with you. Um, I We've had so much content and love in that, that we've gone like way over time and I don't really care. Um, <laughs> I could talk to you for hours, I think. Yeah, well, let's do that too. Maybe we should workshop this. <laughs> Um, so much love to you, um, everybody. If you want to get in contact with Kelly, it's Kelly Bowen, B-O-W-E-N. Yep. Um, and, um, yeah, thank you. And look forward to seeing what else you get up to. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.